So what I'm going to introduce today is something that this is the first time I'm speaking about it publicly. It's a, it's a new design for AI computation, and uh, it addresses one of the biggest challenges that we've been hearing about, which is the energy requirements and to really lower the energy. And uh, not all the details are going to be in, in here, but, but enough for you to get the concept. Uh, the, the patents still have not, not uh, uh, gone public, so we're, we're still not revealing uh, uh, the details of this. And uh, uh, so this is an effort that's been going on in my group for, for about a year and a half. And, and uh, the, the story behind it is, is when NVIDIA really just burst on the scene about a year and a half ago, I brought in uh, one of the guys in my group who works in, in, in device architectures. And I said, look, we, we, we've got we've to get in on this. We've got to do something in AI, uh, but we're not a software group. We've got to do it differently. I want you to design a new hardware system and uh, um, he said, that's very hard. I said, that's exactly why I'm asking you to do this. Because we, we do it, as President Kennedy said, we're doing it because it is hard. And after six months, he came up with something. This is ultra low power to compute in memory. So what happens now is when you do computation, you actually, actually are, um, you, you move, you move uh, information from the logic to the memory back and forth. You do a logic and then you move it back and you bus it back and forth. And this, is, this takes a lot of energy to do this. And this is a compute and memory system where the same device does the memory and the computation. And it's based on a ferroelectric super lattice and it's capital light. There's no exotic materials in here. There's no graphene in here, no exotic materials. It works on a standard CMOS line and can translate just like that. So if we look at, at, at the, this exponential growth in AI that we've been talking about, and you see this, this uh, uh, w what's happening here, and, and companies are investing billions of dollars. And, and I just heard one, one recent company is $150 billion committed to their data centers. Uh, uh, the, the thing is that, that they're often not scalable, they're not CMOS compatible, and they're not cost effective. So we had to address this. And so the idea is that we would enable this and we'd come up with a core innovation. It's a CMOS ready ferroelectric layer, works on a normal processing line, normal fabrication line. It's a proprietary super lattice. It solves the historical reliability challenges. There's a, these extensive write cycles and data retention, even in extreme operating temperatures we've demonstrated. Uh, it's the ultimate building block in that, and we truly like to do this compute computation in memory, all in one device. And so our way of, of thinking about how we would introduce this to the market is to just, just look at it initially as a memory system. So if, if you look at this, we are about 10 million times lower read-write energy than NAND flash. Uh, we're about a million times faster than NAND flash and about 90% voltage reduction than NAND flash. Uh, if we compare it to DRAM, we, it's non-volatile, so we'll have zero refresh cycles. It's about a thousand times lower read-write energy. And so what we would think of doing is, is first switching out, just if, if this were a data center uh, uh, system, that we would initially switch out the NAND systems. We could start making money that way without having to rewrite software, without having to, to do anything much here. And then we would start switching out the, the DRAM, again, moving into that market, and then do the full uh, uh, compute in memory. That's, that's what we have uh, uh, thinking about how we would do this and introduce it. You could do the same thing even in a smartphone. Again, just initially switching out the NAND, the flash memory, and then moving into the DRAM system, and then moving into the compute. Because if, if there are companies that are going directly to, to try to do the compute in memory, compute in memory, but it's hard to get this introduced into the market that way. So that, that's the plan of doing it this way. And so if you look at the, the growth of NAND flash, you know, it's a healthy growth on NAND flash, healthy growth on DRAM, and of course then the AI semiconductor market. So huge areas of growth here that we would be able to capitalize upon, that we would try to do. If you do not believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, send me an email 
tour at drjamestour.org and we will get together and I will share with you about why I embrace the resurrection of Jesus. We want to de-risk this, again, this, this pathway to just have this drop-in, CMOS-compatible, proven materials, standard equipment. There's no, no, no unusual tools that we even need for this. We'd, we're, we're building this straight on, a, uh, on our university uh, system with, with uh, all the standard tools. We are technology ready, readiness level, TRL4, again, which is just a, a component validation in a lab environment. We have not yet moved this into a foundry. We're talking with several of the, the, the classic foundries to, to be able to do this. Our strategy is to be capital light, be, would be a fab, fabulous business model, uh, tier one R&D partners, and we'd secure US production to follow. Uh, this is some of the endurance. I've, I've intentionally kept off here the scale, but you can see that this is a logarithmic scale here. And these are the cycle numbers, the endurance and the retention. And uh, uh, we look at, at the electrical performance, the stability. So these are the, the polarization curves uh, that we've got here and, and uh, uh, how we've been able to do this, this computation and, and uh, uh, trying to extrapolate this out. Uh, we, we still have to get this up to the, the required 10 to the 12 cycles and eventually, hopefully, even higher than that. Uh, uh, we've done the compute in memory. We've put this on the MNIST system uh, so we can read this, this hand, these handwritten numbers. We're at 87% validation here. It's got 30 discrete states, so we have all these intermediate states, so it's not 0, 1, 0, 1. We have 30 discrete states that we can access uh, uh, in, in this, this uh, postsynaptic current. We can do it current and time, current and pulse. And, uh, Theoretical is 88% is the theoretical maximum. We're at 87% being able to, to read, read these uh, uh, handwritten numbers. And if you look at where we are on this, this is this iron lattice. I think we really can address well the, read, the, the right read energy, the right read speed, the endurance cycles, the operating voltage density, and its CMOS scalability. And if we compare it to other things that are out there, I think we're doing very well. Actually, this company, Webit, this is another memory that came out of my lab. We started this company in, uh, in 2015 out of my lab, and it, it, it's, uh, it's selling now on the market. It's got uh, three big customers, and this is based on a, on a re-RAM system. Uh, so, but uh, this, this, was, uh, this is a memory. Uh, I told them at the time, early on, I said, we've got to start looking at this for uh, neuromorphic uh, computation. And they said, no, no, neuromorphic's not, not really important. And it turns out to be the most important thing right now. But anyway, I think that we, we've got good standards here. And then if we look at the DRAM market disruption, again, we're, we're doing quite well on the DRAM uh, disruption. I think that we can, we can handle that quite well. And then uh, again, this, this AI compute market disruptions, uh, uh, th that if we look at Iron Lattice and where we compare to Google and Intel and Mythic AI, we're actually in discussions uh, 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 with one of these companies right now in, in uh, all under NDA discussions and with, with a second uh, large, large company in the country as well. So uh, George just came out with this article uh, in the Wall Street Journal just uh, on November 3rd. He said, the microchip era is about to end. So how could I come here and, and not at least address this because he says, you know, the microchips are coming to an end. So, so uh, could we ride with this? So we, we actually studied quite, quite uh, in depth what, what he was uh, looking at. So he quote, quoted, to quote him in this article, he says that the, the microchip era is about to end. And, uh, and he talks about these three fundamental stress factors. The current chip size limits, the, the reticle constraints on the, on the building of these, the memory bottleneck, and the packaging complexity. He went on, and he, he says, he, and, and, uh, but I think this is how our ferroelectric memory and this compute and memory device will support full wafer integrated circuits while simultaneously solving these core problems. So again, we think we can unlock these. And our bottom line here is, after this analysis, of uh, looking at what George has said is, is there may be significant hurdles to achieve true wafer scale integrated circuits. Uh, however, if the industry does move in that direction, this technology vector can be enhanced and possibly even enabled by our ferroelectric memory and CIM, these computer memory devices. Uh, this, is, this is the group here that we've got going. Every time we, we ask 
somebody who's who's deeply involved in the industry to to uh, look at this and tell us what they think. Uh, they want to come on as an advisor, and so so that's what we've got. So this has come out of my lab. Jay Ho Shin is 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 the uh, device engineer in my lab that that came up with this idea, and Taufik Jarjur is, is one of my former students. He's he's been with uh, Accenture for for 13 years working with the, uh, the largest uh, uh, manufacturers in the world, many of them. And so he's gonna take this on. And, and so here's our advisors. Fred has been like 35 or 40 years. He was with IBM and he's really helped us to, to uh, uh, boost up our patent uh, uh, portfolio. He was uh, uh, a key advisor on the patent side at IBM. So he's gone through all our patents and then we filed more patents to boost it up. John has been a big investor in, uh, uh, in, in, in computing systems. And then uh, uh, these two gentlemen are, are, are deeply involved in the semiconductor industry and foundry experts. Uh, we haven't raised a penny to date. We've taken no money because we, we are just trying to, to see what would be the best strategy for going forward. It's not that we're opposed to taking money. Uh, we just, just uh, uh, haven't, haven't done anything with it because we really want to move with the best strategy. And, and uh, uh, this sort of summarizes where we are on, on this advance and how we're trying to, to bring this forward. Again, it's, it's this, this, we, there's no more busing information back and forth to memory. It's all done in the same device, computation, memory in the same device. And, and uh, this could lower the requirements in a data center by 80 to 90 percent of the energy requirements. So you think about you think about the amount of energy that goes into these energy centers, and we hear again and again how it's going to suck up all of our electricity. Well, if we if we stick with the same devices, that may be the case, but there could be a way to change out devices and to change technology behind the devices, and then address the energy problem in that way by changing out the devices. With that, I will open it up for questions if there are any. Because of you, millions of people have heard the gospel. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he's risen from the dead and you will be saved, that's, right. that's the requirement. We talk about science concepts which draw people in. Take these nanomachines and have them drill into cells. This would be a great way to kill cancer, right? We also talk about Jesus Christ who's the best in everything. My faith in Jesus Christ means more than me than anything. If you could continue to give or give for the first time, we would certainly appreciate Appreciate it. You can go to jesusandscience.org slash donate. All U.S. donations are tax deductible. Thank you so much. Are you subject to electromagnetic uh, interference on any of this? And what is the scale when down is reserved two million meter boundaries on manufacturing the foul level? What is the scale uh, that your the process uses? Right. So our process right now is being done strictly in the university, so it's not a very small scale. So this is what we're talking about with the foundries, that we would go, we, we would start working our way down with the commercial foundries. As far as uh, uh, electrum, uh, as some electrical pulse or something, we have no idea. I, I just don't know. I don't want to give a premature answer on this. Uh, uh, that, that's certainly an important consideration, but I, I just don't have an answer for that. And again, we're just at PRL4. And remember, commercialization is nine, so we have a, a lot of steps we, we still need to go. Um, Doctor, this is really exciting. Uh, I just have one question to kind of clarify this somewhat. Um, I was wondering if, if you think that your innovations and this technology can be applicable to all the data centers that are being built now, including like maybe uh, Elon Musk, Colossus 1 and 2, and and uh, is this is this perhaps I did uh, um, applicable to everyone, and can you keep this um, confined to the United States or Western countries and uh, keep it from being stolen by China? Well, it, 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 is, it, it is applicable to all of them, yes, and, and like I said, we'd like to, to have this stage introduction, just, just start replacing our flash memory, which flash memory, you know, burst, burst on the scene in about... Uh, 2001, something like that. So it's, it's been around for about 25 years. So it's, it's about time. And, and uh, uh, which is really amazing technology. I mean, that you could have electronic memory 
that's non-volatile with no moving parts and, and uh, uh, just by putting in a deep trench capacitor, which was really, really amazing when it came out. Um, but, uh, uh, and then, then we would begin to, to switch out DRAM and, and phase this in in that way so that it'd be an easy transition. That's the hope. But yes, it would apply uh, uh, to all the data centers. This would work for that. As far as keeping it in the United States, I mean, that's what we want to do. We, we certainly want to keep this in the United States. But, you know, we are in a university and I have a group of all sorts of people. I mean, the FBI has come to me and said, you know, we, we're, we're concerned, you, you know, do you have any, any students that, that might be spies? And I'm like, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> you're sure the guys that you're supposed to tell me. And so they came back again. I said, fear not. You don't have to worry. I asked all my guys, I said, are any of you spies? And they all said, no. So we're good to go. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know what more I could do. I mean, if they're a spy, you, you stop them at the border. I mean, that's, up, that's your job, not my job. So, uh, uh, you know, we do the best we can, but I, I, don't, I don't do any classified work in my laboratory uh, uh, because if you really do classified work, you can't do it in a university. You have to have a special facility. Uh, the nearest facility to me is NASA. And, and uh, if you do classified work, every time I, I, I even need to use the restroom, you have to take out the hard drive, put it in a, in a locked cabinet, go to the restroom, come back and put the thing back in. And it, this just doesn't work at my age. I mean, it's just, it's not the way to go. And so, so uh, we don't do classified work. And, and, and the, the way we succeed is we share information between all of us. We sit in group meetings for hours and they want everybody to contribute to this. So um, I, I just remember how we beat the Soviet Union. We beat the Soviet Union, not by keeping things absolutely hardened and concealed. We beat the Soviet Union by, by sharing information between us. They kept things secret and we beat the pants off of them. And it was all based around silicon technology. And that's because we had an open system of sharing and communicating, and that, that's the way we succeed. Thank you for joining me today. If you could give us a like, share, or podcast review, we would appreciate it. If you have any questions, you could send them to ask at jesusandscience.org, and we'll try to answer some of those questions in an upcoming video. And if you do not believe in the physical resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you want to hear about why I believe, send me an email to tour at drjamestour.org and we'll get together by Zoom and I'll share with you why I embrace the resurrection of Jesus Christ.